Hello friends, followers, and of course a big welcome to the EasyJet SimPilot members that are out there. Today we're going to be looking at a new upcoming feature to the Fly-by-Wire A320NX Airbus on the iPad or FlyPad tablet. And this is a great new feature that I'm looking forward to using in all my upcoming streams and it will really add a new sense of realism to all of the flights that we do and that is the takeoff and landing performance calculator. So I need to start by saying that this is not yet available, it is still being worked on but hopefully should be coming very very soon and uh, I can't wait to try that out. So let's take a look on board shall we? Let's get into the flight deck. So here we are and you can see it's under the uh, the performance tab and we've got both the takeoff and the landing. So I'm going to do a full tutorial on this when it is available, for, but for now I just want to take a first look at essentially what this will do for us. So before every flight, every takeoff, and of course every landing, the pilot needs to know that the aircraft with all its weight, the current weather at the airport, is able to obviously take off and of course be able to land given the distances that are available for any particular runway. So at the moment we're in a rather rainy looking uh, Gibraltar so not the best weather by far to be uh, doing any sort of procedures here given the uh, difficulty it is landing but we're going to uh, have a look and see what we uh, can uh, can pop into this just to give you a rough idea of how this works so first thing we would need to do is we need to uh, we need to come down here and we would need to get some weather we need the weather information to be able to put that in so if we just go to our atsu aoc and go to our weather request we can type in uh, lima x-ray golf bravo which is the code of course for gibraltar so let's send that off and that should arrive in a uh, in a minute or so so let's have a look at some of the other things that we can be uh, looking at so Normally when we depart at Gibraltar, it's a very short runway, so we'd almost always be using flaps 3. But I'm just going to leave this at flaps 1, the normal config, for the moment, just to see what happens when we pop this in. The other thing you'll need is information on the actual runway itself. So we need the runway altitude, so for that we come to our charts, and uh, if we say we're going to be departing from uh, runway 27, uh, of course that would be dictated to by the winds. So runway 27, we can see the elevation there is 11, so let's uh, pop that in, runway altitude of 11. And then we also need the weight that we've got of the aircraft. So our current aircraft weight at the moment as it stands is 69,600 kilograms. Of course you're going to burn a little bit of that once you start the APU and you of course burn more as you taxi out. So we could probably put uh, 59500 in there. So let's pop that in 59500. The runway heading as well, runway heading of 269. Let's pop that in. Two six nine, and then we'll have a look at our uh, takeoff distance available. Now, there's a little bit of uh, I, th I think this is actually wrong at the moment here because this says this is the accelerate stop distance available. Well, realistically, we would be wanting to know at this point the takeoff runway available. They're essentially the same thing, and takeoff runway available, sometimes abbreviated to the TORA, is something that you're probably a little bit more familiar with seeing. So, the takeoff distance runway available is 1778 meters. So, let's just pop that in there. One seven Notice there's an M there to remind you that that is the meters and not the feet of the runway. So 1778, let's pop that in. 1778. Okay, so now we're just waiting on the weather. Let's check out the temperature and the current QH. So that should have come through by now. Messages received and the meta. Okay, so the current QNH is 1015 and the temperature is 15. So let's put those in. Uh, temperature of 15 and QNH 1015. 
five. All right, so at this point then, we're ready to calculate. Now, as you can see, the tug driver has actually just started moving. I hope it doesn't try and push me back. Um, that will have happened because there's a key binding issue where I've been typing away there on the uh, on the keyboard to put these numbers in. And you may have noticed some strange things going on with your aircraft when you've tried to type in on the fly pad as well. I think the fly wire team are looking to address that by actually putting a keyboard somewhere on here because key binding issues are uh, all causing a little bit of a problem and they could also cause flight control errors as well so you may have been watched a stream recently where I was playing around with this and suddenly the aircraft started to uh, to move as you can see <laughs> my tug drivers now starting to push me back so all I'm going to very do is uh, let me just quickly tell him leave me alone thank you okay so let's hit calculate and see what happens here so if I click calculate you can see that we've now got some information shown to us here on the runway so it's telling us that v1 would be one seven uh, sorry would be eight eight zero so that's how many meters we would get down the runway that's meters of course not feet that's how many meters we would get down the runway before we were able to actually rot before we were committed sorry to take off we can't rotate at that speed remember v1 and vr aren't always the same as you can see they are calculated down here as well at the moment they don't always match up with the mcdo figures that you get on your performance page once you'd fill those in you'd see that uh, they may differ slightly but as i say i'm going to come and do a full tutorial on this as well today is just a quick look at uh, what's to come and you can see here, this one's very important up there. That is the stop margin. So if you had a failure before reaching V1, so you weren't committed to takeoff, you abandoned your takeoff, and you obviously applied full brakes, the spoilers were going, etc., then you should be able to stop with 17 meters remaining. Now that sounds kind of close to me on uh, a runway such as this. I don't want to end up in the uh, Mediterranean. So of course, what I'm gonna do now is say, well, realistically, we wouldn't take off flaps one here. We would take off flaps three. So now let's recalculate and see what happens to this stop margin and how many meters down the runway V1 would appear. So let's hit calculate. And interestingly enough, as you can see at the moment, for some reason, it's telling us that flaps three wouldn't be beneficial here. So at the moment, you can see this is still a work in progress because realistically, flaps three would be a much better takeoff config because it would get us airborne much quickly than flaps one would. So the coding of this is still a work in process and the fly-by-wire team will not want to release this until, of course, it is actually all working. But you can see how this is going to uh, how this is going to work on how we will be able to test things. The other thing we'd be able to have a look at then is what about landing? Well, let's say we had a major failure on takeoff and we needed to turn around and we needed to land very, very quickly. Now, usually, if you had any sort of failure here, we probably wouldn't come back and land at uh, Japan to certainly in weather like this but if you've got an engine fire where you hadn't got time to divert anywhere you would want to land here how do you know you could safely land here because you are fully loaded with fuel you've got your payload of passengers on board so let's have a look at our landing page so this is where we'd say right okay we've had a problem we want to check if we can actually get back in here if we have a major problem so once again this time we have got a little bit more information regarding the winds now what i would like to see as well in the takeoff page is that same information being asked things like uh the winds because obviously if you've got a strong headwind that's going to slow you down in the event of uh, an emergency and an aborted takeoff and also what would be really nice and i'm sure it will come at some point is also give us a flex temp calculation as well to pop in here you can also see, because I've gone onto the landing page and the takeoff page, at the moment, all those figures have been lost. Well, I would expect those to stay there so you can flip between the two without losing all that information. So I'm, again, sure that is to come. But again, just to show you how this, uh, how this is going to work, let's put in this information here. So we've got wind direction and magnitude, which if I just pull that weather back up again for us, AOC messages received and that meta. So the wind is, wow, okay, uh, typical Gibraltar weather. So 080 at 21. Let's pop that in. Uh, so 80 at 21 and the temperature was 15 Q&H 1015 
and the runway altitude is what did I say the runway altitude was uh, the runway altitude was 11 so let's pop that in as well runway heading was 269 there we go and the runway condition at the moment is most certainly not dry as you can see looking outside so we'd uh, select in fact it says runway condition so you're not looking at wet or anything like that you're looking at whether the how good the braking action is at this point so if it's dry obviously dry and then from there as the runway becomes more and more contaminated then you would have to select either good medium poor etc etc normally this is a pilot report which is usually found on your um, usually found on the ATIS if that's available so I'm just going to put good to medium at this point as you can see that pushback driver is once again trying to get rid of me uh, pushback stop there we go clearly I've uh, got a key binding thing there calling the tug all right so runway landing distance available so I am going to do a full tutorial on this but just so you know the landing distance available is not 1778 you actually find that a little bit further down here so if we're landing back on runway uh, runway 27 the landing distance available is 1528 so let's have a put that in uh, 1528 there it is here comes the tug driver again <laughs> we're gonna be fighting with him while I show you this video uh, our approach speed now our approach speed again we would get from going to our performance page and going all the way through and at this point you'd be able to put stuff in like this but for now we'll just put an approach speed of uh, 130 so let's pop that in there 130 and the weight, well, the weight wouldn't be too dissimilar from our takeoff weight, would it? So we could perhaps choose 19400 for that. Um, sorry, 59400. There we go. And of course, it would be flaps full overweight procedure. Well, actually, we're not overweight for the landing at this, so we wouldn't need an overweight procedure. Uh, reverse thrust. Normally, I am not going to go into too much detail in this video, but you would leave that just set to no, even if you were going to use reverse thrust, just because you want to be very conservative with these numbers. Runway slope. I'm not going to go into that now, uh, but we can just put a runway slope of zero in there. And if we hit the calculate button, you can see that according to these figures we would not be able to land given the state of the um, given the state of the current runway conditions and the weight etc of our aircraft of also these wind conditions as well but we can try so if we now change that to dry hit calculate it's still telling us even though we've got less uh, room for error we still wouldn't be able to land here so if we then put the reverse thrust on click calculate that's not actually made any difference at all um, let's reduce our weight so if we reduced it to about 50 tons also reduce the approach speed now let's recalculate see what happens we'd still be struggling to get back in here so we know this is something that pilots have to do they have to know can they land at the airport that they are taking off from if they needed to return so if we weren't allowed to go back there we could then perhaps have a look at going to Malaga so uh, from here Lima Echo Mike Golf let's just pull up the charts for Malaga we'll pick up any runway that we can here just pull up the uh, the airport briefing page um, uh, down here and it would actually be the airport briefing and the arrivals page one of these and it will give us the uh, distance etc we can use but for now let's just pop in just go back to just go back to this let's say then we're going to land on runway 30 we would of course have to change the weather because we'd have to get the weather from the McDo for uh, for Malaga let's just change these winds then so uh, let's just reduce the wind there probably not by too much uh, so let's say we're gonna land runway uh, in fact if those were the winds we'd probably be landing on runway 12 so runway 12 which is direction 118 uh, runway heading 118 uh, let's say it's not raining there let's put our weight back there we go we'll put that approach speed back as well runway landing distance available this is not accurate this is not the landing runway distance available but we'll pop this in now 2750 um, there we go 
2750 full flaps turn that reverses off no runway slope and click calculate and there you can see now yep that's no problem we could land at Malaga now let's just play with these figures you can see this would be the maximum uh, or rather the minimum stopping distance with maximum brakes so that's you braking manually using the foot brakes or if you've got medium brake set or if you've got the low brake set well let's just change the runway condition so the uh, let's say it's medium to poor if it had been raining there for whatever reason now watch what happens to these lines and these figures as I click the calculate I, sh I expect to see these all jump up the runway so these numbers here would increase so if I click calculate and there we go so those numbers have all increased but they're just not showing here correctly at the moment just because they're actually really all close together as you can see from the manual braking distance the medium braking distance or the low braking distance there's not very much between them so this still needs a little bit of work but the coding is coming and I expect to see this hopefully in the fly-by-wire a320 NX very very soon and we'll be using this of course as a great way to add realism to all our uh, pre-flight uh, checklists and things that we have to do before we uh, commence our real ops departures hope you've enjoyed that if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments down below hit the like video as well if you enjoy that and of course if you're new to the channel then please consider hitting that subscribe button for real live flights and of course more tutorials to come i look forward to seeing you in the flight deck again very soon bye bye for now